Do you guys remember Game of War Fire Age? Game of War. Yeah, that game. Whatever happened to that game? Well, besides the FBI getting involved, it's actually a pretty simple story. You see, Game of War Fire Age used to be one of the biggest mobile games in the entire world back in 2014, yet for some reason it just disappeared. It just fell all of a sudden it went from being Kate Upton everywhere to just gone. And it's like nobody even realized it because nobody I knew even played it. Okay, so what happened? First, let's look at the Google Trends data to see is Game of War Fire Age actually dead like it, are people still playing this maybe in other countries and it's still super popular we just don't hear about it and if you look at the last 12 months it's sort of you know going up and down but if you widen the time frame here for the past let's say 15 years you will see it ranks less than one right now on the popularity chart and you can see here that there was a massive spike as starting at the end of 2014 probably i would say around mid 2014 all the way until early 2016 is, is when that uh, decline sort of started to bottom out i would say so holy shit, like this game was mega popular back in 2014 and now it's almost like it doesn't even exist so then i thought okay well maybe they just stopped developing the game like maybe they just stopped updating it so it just died over time but then i went to the google play store and it turns out this game was just updated again on june 9th 2022 they're still releasing updates for this game i gotta give them credit at least they're updating this completely dead game but in order to understand what actually happened for the game to crash so hard we have to sort of set the stage a little bit and figure out where did this game even come from it feels like it just you're all of a sudden you're watching the super bowl and kate upton shows up dressed like athena and you're like oh what is this it's an it's a mobile game so game of war fire age was and is still developed by a company called machine zone inc which is located in i believe palo alto california which which I find interesting because a lot of these city builder games are usually developed in other countries at this point. But regardless, the game was released in 2012 in some select countries, and I believe it was released here in 2013. And it was basically the first pay to win city builder mobile game that you and I are familiar with. At this point, there's like a thousand duplicates of Game of War Fire Age, and that's part of the reason that the game is no longer popular but back then it was pretty much a novelty to have a real-time strategy medieval war game that was in your pocket that you never shut off there was always the risk of going to war whether you were there for it or not even if it did have like super nintendo graphics i mean you got to remember the end of 2012 was when the iphone 5 came out but even that phone was capable of better graphics than this but the premise of the game was simple you build up your city you join a powerful alliance and you wage war and try to conquer the server now you did have some timed events that came around once in a while but the gameplay was pretty simple to say the least i mean some reviewers of the game complained that it wasn't even really a game it was more so just a time sink or a busy work simulator mainly because the core of the gameplay experience was just queuing up a building or some sort of timer and then either leaving and coming back later or having to spend money to speed it up which i know sounds like normal city builder games that you and i are familiar with but at least the new city builder games that have come out in the last few years have like open field movement and you can move around the map and you could see your different heroes or characters in 3d the games now are just way more in depth but back then unless you were at war there was really nothing to do other than just watch a timer go down and yeah you don't have to dig too far into Metacritic to find a slew of negative reviews for this game complaining about that very factor on top of the fact that the game was a uh, sort of pay to win but the bland gameplay didn't stop the whales from spending I mean game of war fire age was truly one of the first mobile games to exploit every single monetization trick in the book that you and I know today I'm talking about time gating content I'm talking Talking about limiting the amount of actions you can do per day limiting the number of events that you can do putting a massive paywall behind some of the most important things in the game and making all the upgrades possible with various different currencies that have different exchange rates and again we're familiar with all of this today but that was one of the first games to really capitalize on player psychology and grip people to the point of addiction I will give them credit though it was one of the first games to launch with a built-in messaging system globally 
that also translated messages within your alliance chat or world chat and that truly made the game feel like it was a global experience and even if the translation feature wasn't great it was still really good for its time so with enough whales that were hooked and addicted to the game they started to generate a massive amount of revenue and this allowed machine zone to pump out advertisements like no other mobile game could have at that time besides maybe clash of clans i would say in 2014 machine zones advertising budget was 40 million dollars and that was the year that you saw mariah carey in the super bowl advertisements and then in 2015 they replaced kate upton with mariah carey who also reportedly had a seven figure deal from machine zone and that's on top of the fact that they were capitalizing on the boom of youtube marketing i mean just look at some of these advertisements 168 million views 157 million views 66 million views 34 million these are not organic views these are marketing views these are paid views these are advertisements that machine zone pushed in front of tons of videos here on youtube and clearly it was successful now they obviously had a mega successful marketing campaign but the problem was that it didn't really take the average player that long to figure out what the game was really all about the upgrades and the progress just sort of felt soulless on top of the fact that the graphics were horrible and the gameplay was boring unless you paid thousands of dollars you couldn't get anywhere near the whales in the game which caused some people to spend a ridiculous amount this is an article that says california man spent 1 million playing game of war a 45 year old california man pleaded guilty in federal court Thursday to ripping off 4.8 million from his employer. Notably, the man admitted to spending 1 million of that on Game of War. Kevin Lee admitted in Sacramento federal court that from May 2008 to March 2015, he embezzled nearly 5 million from his controller job at a heavy equipment company called Holt California. He admitted in his guilty plea to spending approximately one million dollars on game of war or what about this one belgian teen spends forty six thousand dollars in free to play game of war fire age according to the report the boy is said to have bought the game's gold using his grandmother's credit card his mother says that he did know that he was spending real money then there's this article that says game of wars paying players spend an average of 550 dollars on its in-app purchases in 2015. now that doesn't sound like a lot but it says here the average paying player on mobile spends $86.50 per year on in-app purchases. So the fact that Game of War was able to get their paying players spending upwards of $550 shows that there was something about this game that really got people addicted. So while the gameplay was relatively bland and boring, there was an extremely small subset of people who would get super addicted to this sort of real-time war-in-your-pocket style gameplay that was relatively new at the time but despite the financial success of game of war closing out 2015 its days were already numbered that same year machine zone released another title that you're probably also familiar with because it also has a very famous celebrity mascot and that is none other than mobile strike featuring arnold schwarzenegger and just like its predecessor this game also had a massive ad campaign appearing in yet another super bowl and as of november of 2016 the app was the second highest grossing game on apple app store mobile strike was basically a copy and paste of game of war with a little bit of upgrades and a fresh coat of paint instead of medieval war you were now waging modern war and they probably figured that it would be easier to target a younger audience who was already playing first person shooters that were popular back in 2015 so while it seemed like machine zones focus was going from game of war to mobile strike something interesting happened that year the fbi got involved this article says former game of war executive arrested by FBI for allegedly stealing trade secrets. This was posted August 26th of 2015. According to a report by the Wall Street Journal, 42-year-old Jing Zhang, a director of global infrastructure at Game of War developer Machine Zone, was arrested last week after allegedly threatening to distribute data he had downloaded from proprietary Game of War servers. The data Zhang had obtained tracked how users interacted with the game, including information on how users spend money on the game's in-app purchases, which could provide valuable insight and a huge competitive advantage over other online game providers and competitors. Machine Zone had filed a complaint against Zhang earlier this year for attempting to use the stolen data as a bargaining chip while trying to negotiate a better 
severance package from the studio. Zhang, a naturalized American citizen, was arrested by the FBI last week as he allegedly attempted to board a flight to Beijing. Whatever their trade secrets were, it was basically drugs for those that found these games addicting. And if there's one thing you don't do, it's mess with a drug dealer's money. Following that fun little debacle, Machine Zone moved into 2016 with a rebranding to MZ and had a funding round that valued the company at $5 billion. That was also the year that Machine Zone partnered with Square Enix to bring Final Fantasy 15, a mobile MMO experience to the franchise that everybody already knew and loved. And then the new Empire update came out later in 2017. And yes, this was basically just another reskin of Game of War Fire Age, except with Final Fantasy elements, like literally the same thing. Now, with all the success of Game of War and also Mobile Strike, which was the number two highest grossing App Store game, you might say, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But guys, it is in 2014 at this point. I mean, in 2017, we started seeing games like Fortnite come out on mobile, which were just way, way better than the bland Super Nintendo graphics that we were used to from Game of War in 2013. It was clear that this copy and paste method just wasn't going to hold the test of time. Moving into 2018, the CEO of MZ was actually voted off by the board of directors, and this led to a ton of layoffs at the company as they tried to refocus on gaming and stray away from marketing. Because if you guys haven't figured out by now, they mainly were a marketing company. There was very little gaming going on here. It was just tapping timers and swiping your credit card. So they laid off 125 employees, including media buyers, by basically getting rid of their Cognant team, which was part of their in-house media buying and marketing department, which is actually crazy because Cognant claimed to manage tens of millions of marketing dollars per month. And according to its website, use its position as the largest mobile media buyer on the planet to drive efficiencies across the board for all advertisers. Now that they were focusing more on gaming, they released a brand new game in 2018 called World War Rising. And it's not like they would just take all the games they've already made and slap a World War II coat of paint on it, right? R right? Okay, that's exactly what they did. It's literally a copy and paste. <laughs> It's the same game, okay? It's the same game at this point. Now we're talking about World War II. Pretty much nothing's changed. Then we find ourselves in 2020 when AppLovin decided to purchase Machine Zone for a grand total of $500 million. Yes, you heard me correctly, approximately $500 million for a company that boasts over $310 million game downloads has made some of the most popular and profitable mobile games on the entire planet and that also just had a valuation in 2016 of five billion dollars yeah a 500 million dollar acquisition was uh <sighs> Those investors were uh, were not happy about that, but the massive decline in the value of Machine Zone is the same reason that there has been a massive decline in the player base of Game of War Fire Age. And that's because the company was basically a marketing company. In the early stages of mobile games, Game of War could get away with having bland gameplay because it was sold on sort of a novel idea on top of a massive marketing budget. But when you copy and paste that game four or five times as the landscape of mobile gaming changes and evolves, you're you're just not going to keep your players. I mean, they did release a game called Crystalborn in 2020, which was a little bit different, but it was sort of like a copy and paste of Raid Shadow Legends. And that's the same year Genshin came out. Okay, you can't be releasing low quality games with competition like this. You'll just never survive. Game of War Fire Age failed because it was a company that focused entirely on marketing and money and did literally nothing to innovate their games. They forgot that the game has to be fun for people to want to spend money. And unfortunately, I don't think that Machine Zone is going to be the last company to learn that lesson the hard way. I'm sure you can think of one of your favorite gaming franchises that recently has released a game on mobile that just feels a bit watered down with all methods to progress locked behind arbitrary time gates and paywalls. I'm looking at you, Diablo Immortal. 